This is a quick video on what I do to anneal case necks. As you fire brass, the case expands out to fill the chamber of the firearm. And then as you resize the case, you squish that neck back down. Repeated expanding and resizing can cause the case neck to uh, become work hardened. Just like if you take a paper clip and you bend it back and forth, it will actually become brittle and then break. Um, so when, as it becomes work hardened, it grips the bullet with a different amount of tension. So it helps to anneal it to keep that tension even and to keep the brass fairly soft. With repeated firing, you can actually work harden it to the point where the case neck splits. This case was fired, fired fine. And then upon inspecting the brass afterwards, you can see that the case neck actually split and then gas jetting opened up that split a little bit. So in order to prevent the necks from becoming overly work hardened, I anneal them. And I, you take it up to a temperature where the grain structure changes and the brass becomes soft again. And to do that, I have some equipment out here which I'll go through, but I basically use Templac um, temperature sensitive paint this is uh, the 750, 750 degree Fahrenheit version. And that will turn from a green chalky color to a translucent um, glassy color as the case hits 750 degrees. I use a drill to turn the brass. And I use a torch to heat up the brass. And then I, when the brass gets to the proper temperature, I drop it in a pan of water. Since we will be working in front of an open flame, it's always a good idea to have a fire extinguisher handy. It sits right here next to the bench that I'm working at. This is an everyday torch that you would get at your local hardware store. It works well, um, but I don't use it anymore. It has a pretty tight flame. Instead, I use a standard cooking propane tank. It's a little bigger and cheaper than the uh, torch tank and it and I also use a benzomatic uh, map swirl flame this gives a broader flame as opposed to the tight concentrated flame that this one has and that helps me heat up the necks more evenly you can see the differences in flame with these two torches. The swirl flame has a much broader, less concentrated flame than your typical torch. So again, this will heat that case neck more evenly. So I'm starting with three times fired brass that's been decapped and tumbled. I like to tumble it and clean it up a little bit to get some of the um, carbon, soot, and different chemicals off of the case. So I'm not breathing that in as it's um, being heated up and I'll take a handful of cases maybe 20 percent and I will just put a line of temp black on the inside of the case neck so you can see the temp black in there when this dries it will be a chalky greenish color and then as you heat it up it'll get glassy and kind of translucent once it hits the 750 degrees. So I'll put Templac on a handful of cases and I'll do those cases first to get my timing down, but then I'll also do them periodically throughout the process. I'll pick up one with the Templac in it and look just to make sure I'm on track and I'm doing the right thing. I used to uh, put the Templac in every case, but that's a time consuming process that's not really necessary. I have a bunch of cases with Templac on it and what I'll do is I'll stick them in the drill. I'll run the drill at a low speed in front of the flame. I'll look down the case neck as it's going and I'll time the amount of time it takes the Templac to turn from that chalky color. That one's kind of wet. To, to turn from that chalky color to a, a clear glassy color. I'll make sure that's repeatable over a handful of cases. I'll then do it for all the cases and from time to time I'll pick up one of these Templac ones to make sure I have the timing right and everything like that. 
I have my flame. I have the drill with the case neck in it. I'll run it in front of the flame, waiting for it to change color. And I'll just tilt the drill and drop the, the hot brass into this pan of water to cool it off. The goal is to get it up to 750 just for a second and then let it go. I also have a stopwatch running where I'll watch the time so I can time how long it takes it to go so that the ones without temp lack I can tell when about they're done. This is a case with temp lack in it. You can see it in there and we'll watch it as it spins. That was about 12 seconds. Ten seconds. So it's about eleven seconds each each time. So here's a couple annealed cases, and you can see the slight color change mid-body on them, just upwards and mid-body. It's kind of tough to see on, um, on camera. It's a little more apparent in person, but what I just put in there was a non-annealed case, and you can see the stripe that the annealed cases have that the non-annealed case here doesn't have. So it's kind of a stripe that goes straight across there. It's not really on this case. Again, it's tough to see on camera, but it's pretty easy to see um, to the naked eye. So that's what they look like after they're annealed. They'll also resize a little easier, a little smoother, and the bullet seating won't have as much of a pop to the start of seating. It'll just kind of be smooth and feel like it's being ductile and moving. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you had, uh, if you reloaded a piece of factory fresh brass next to a piece of reloading brass that you've used a while and hadn't annealed, you'll see the difference pretty readily. Here's my 100 annealed cases. Two things I want to say is one, um, use the templac so you can get your timing down. Two, make sure you control the flame point. Um, make sure you control that flame to keep it at about that same distance, about that same um, power output the whole time. Keep your drill chuck in front of it at the same distance. Try to spin it at the same speed. And also, I use my hand to kind of run it at low power to slow down the chuck a little bit to keep it at the same speed because the trigger of the drill driver isn't enough to make sure it's usually there. And then three, to pick up some of those template cases from time to time to check how you're doing. So um, I'll tumble these to get the template off them, the ones that have it on it, and then I'll dry them out full length size them and continue the reloading process. So that's the way I kneel case necks. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like it on YouTube and subscribe to my channel so you can see more firearms related videos. Thank you for watching.